everybody. Welcome to episode six. Can you believe I made it this far? Sometimes I can. Hi guys, my name is Chevy Rell. If you don't know who I am and you care to know, hit the little I. If not, let's get right into the stuff. I have a huge FO this week. My Oracle is off the needles. I'm going to stand back here because it's huge. Here it is in all its glory. Now, like I said, I don't know if I'm going to wear this or not because even when I bound it off, I hated it. Actually, I'm kind of chilly and it feels pretty good. Maybe I will keep it, I don't know. I, You know this was on Funky Island like a million times, right? Throughout the course of this being on the needles. I was going to go back on Instagram and see when I cast this on just to see how long it took because you know it was like hibernating for a minute. You guys, I say that this was on Fuck You Island. I know I do. It is no fault of the pattern or of the yarn I was knitting with. The yarn is gorgeous. The pattern was written fine. I don't know what my problem is. This thing fought me the whole way through. First off, I bought a kit and, and I don't know if you can tell or not, but I feel like mine's bigger than some people's. Now I've only seen pictures of some people's, but when I blocked it out on the blocking mats, I was like, this thing's ginormous, which is probably why I ran out of yarn. The pattern calls for this brioche section right here to, to be the black but I ran out and then I forget I was going since I didn't have enough black to do the brioche section I was just gonna do the lace weight section and then I was going to do the I cord bind off in black but I I didn't have enough for that either I had like a little ball like this and I was not going to play yarn chicken because I also played yarn chicken in the green section. This green lace section, I am actually three, two rows short of what the pattern called for. I cord bind off was fine. I know I'd never done one before. I know that everybody griped about them. Taking a long time. It did take a long time, but not anywhere near as long as my even star with 3000 beads. This is an applied border or applied edging or something. So that means you knit the whole thing in the round and then you pick up and knit this way, if that makes any sense to you at all. But after that, like I'll take an I cord bind off any day. That being said, blocked it. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna throw it out. Like I wasn't gonna do any, you know, I, I was hoping because you know, this thing has fought me the whole time, right? So I was just gonna like throw it out on the blocking mats. Yeah, no, mm -mm. it did not, no. I mean, why would it be easy? Why would it be easy, right? Like this thing has not been easy the entire way through. Why would it be easy now? I had to get out my blocking wires. It's late at night. It's like 10, 30, 11 o'clock, which is usually about the time I'm in bed. I'm not asleep. It's usually when I'm scrolling through Instagram. But the last thing I wanted to be doing is down on my hands and knees, putting a blocking wire through this monstrosity of a shawl. I was listening to my book. It wasn't all terrible, but I'm like, you know, weaving the little blocking wire. I'm, getting it all, you know, if any of y'all messed with blocking wires, I I was trying to get it all out even. I'm going around a little by little. I didn't mess with, I, I just eyeballed it. Actually, when I blocked it, it was more a square. And I didn't give a shit. As I'm going around my little circle, trying to make sure that, you know, like eyeball it to a decent shape, 
I mean, I can't really say a circle and I can't really say a square, but I at least wanted to even-ish, you know? Oh yeah. Now keep in mind at one point, here again, any of you who've worked with blocking wires, I'm trying to feed it through and I'm trying to like pull it through the one end. Yeah, totally pulled it out like this much and had to redo it all again. Like, you guys. I had to do some yoga breathing. Dan was sleeping. I wanted to scream at the top of my lungs and maybe punch something. I'm working my way around, right? The, the, the perimeter. For any of y'all who saw my post on Instagram, it was there. Can you see that? Yeah. Totally drop stitches. Totally, I mean, and I, you guys, I, I totally, I didn't even care. I just picked it up, tacked that. Where's the, uh, yeah, it's supposed to look something, I, I don't even care. But, and I mean, it looks fine. Nobody's gonna sit, you would have probably never noticed that had I not pointed it out, but. It, it, it was screwing me all the way to the end, you guys. All the way to the end. So, like, I am so, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And actually, I'm kind of chilly, so I'm gonna wear it right now. It hated me all the way to the end, and I kind of hated it. For those of you who haven't watched previous episodes, when I pull this up, it's actually my tablecloth on my table. This would also be a good tablecloth. I think that I might switch them out. My Even Star is lace weight, and I noticed a snag. At first, it made me physically ill. I don't have any of the yarn left. I knit this years ago. Well, maybe not years ago, but long enough that I don't have any of the yarn left. So I'm sitting here thinking what, I'm looking right there because that's where it is and I can see it. I'm sitting here wondering, like, what do I do? I'm gonna felt it. I'm gonna needle felt it. Like I did my Multnomah. I don't know if you saw that. I'll take a before and after. Uh, maybe by the time I edit this, I'll have the before and after together. I don't know. Next finished object. Last weekend, uh, again, if you follow me on Instagram, I went to a quilting retreat with Mama Jean, who, for those of you who haven't seen, is my stepmom. She's a big quilter. We spent the weekend at this place. They fed us and we had beds. And I have never been to a knitting retreat. I assume that it's similar. After this quilting retreat, I would love to go with knitters because I was, of course, the only lone knitter slash spinner there. I got a lot done. I took, I don't know if you can see, oh, that's better. I had nine, well, wait, I don't know if you can, I think it's like a bulky maybe. I haven't done a wraps per inch, but nine ounces. So this is about 150, a little over 150 yards. My bobbin was so full, I couldn't fit any more on there. So I still have that much to ply. Oh, I'm thinking that it'll probably be a shawl at one point. I haven't washed this or anything. I did spin it woolen. So for those of you who don't know, uh, think woolen spun is, is fluffy and airy, it's gonna be a long draw. Whereas a worsted spun, I know that if you are just a knitter, worsted is a weight of yarn, but in spinning, worsted is a preparation of yarn. So when you do a long draw back with the fiber, that there's a bunch of air in the fiber, so it's real light and airy and 
it, it's not a dense yarn. If you spin it woolen spun, which is a short forward draw, like that's where they'll, they'll have the fiber in front of them and they just do like short forward, some people call it inchworming. That is more of a, a denser yarn because there isn't as much air in it as there is with a long draw. So that's going to be a, a smoother sort of look whereas this is fat with a lot of air in it. And, and like I said, light. Think of a she, uh, Brooklyn Tweed. If any of you have ever picked up a skein of Brooklyn Tweed and been like, oh my gosh, it doesn't weigh anything, that's why. Next, we'll talk about whips. Those are my only two finished objects. My whips, uh, brainless socks, haven't touched them. Crocheted squares, haven't touched them. My wanderer, Modern Mucklux, I got this much. I got the heel done. I will tell you, which I'm not giving anything away because it says this in, in the direct or in the pattern before you buy it. This is an afterthought heel. The reason my toe isn't done, I have, I, I got all of this done basically outside from what you saw the last time, which I think was here-ish at the quilting retreat. I've ripped this toe out umpteen times. The pattern tells you to go so far, like knit so many repeats of this chart for a size seven to eight. So the pattern is only written for one size and adjust accordingly to your foot. Well, I'm a nine. So I'm like, okay, well, if it said, you know, two repeats, I'll go two and a half whatever I make up a number so that I don't give anything away I did that huge huge so I rip like like man foot huge so I rip back and I'm like I think that I could get away with doing what she said for a 7-8 right huge I have not checked the gauge that the pattern says you should be getting however when I try it on the leg fits exactly how it looks in her pictures. So, yeah, I'm at the toe and I ripped it out so many times and re-knit it that I was over it. So it's just chilling right, right now. Haven't touched it since the retreat. I have also been hooking, hooking, hooking on my rug hooking thing. Hooking on my rug hooking thing. Freaking hookers. I have been working on my rug hooking thing that I talked about the last time. My Aunt Karen got me my little rug hook. I don't remember where I was the last time, but I think that I'm further now. Not very much. It still fights me and it makes my, my wrist hurt, but I work on it little by little here and there. I have worked on it though. I had to show you to prove it. I have a new cast on. And that would be my Boborg, Bo Boborg. No, I can't pronounce, I can't pronounce the words. There you go, by Julie Hoover. I'm super excited about it. I'm not very far, but you can at least see I have one we this is the back I think you start on you guys this is so soft I just want to sit here and touch it some more I can't wait to wear it it is so soft I only wound three skeins I bought seven for and I'll just wind them as I go I will tell you, this is single ply. It was felted in certain spots, not all of it. If any of you use this yarn, which is, I seriously don't have the stupid tag. This is Manos del Uruguay Maxima. The cool thing about this yarn is it is fair trade. 
extra fine merino and the location and the artist, every one of the girls signs it. It's a nonprofit organization which assembles women in cooperatives throughout the countryside of Uruguay. The aim of the organization is to bring economic and social opportunities to rural women. So if any of y'all ever are trying to decide between Manos del Uruguay or another yarn, it is pretty cool that they're helping out sisters and they sign their own labels and I think that's pretty flipping cool. Because it is a single ply and it is 100% wool, <clears throat> when it is in the skein or the hank, I'm guessing that as it gets moved, as it gets packed, as it's shoved in and out of the yarn bin, the plies on the outside of the hank are getting jostled enough that they do felt. That being said, it's fine. It pulled apart fine. It's just I had to go slower when I was winding it because, you know, the skein winder just didn't go around. It'd go like half around until it came to a felted spot. And then I just had to carefully pull it apart. So just know that if you buy this yarn. I'm kind of glad that I know that because I know that I need to be extra, like extra, extra careful when I uh, block this and wash this and whatnot. Which I knew anyway, but always good to have a reminder. My next work in progress is my Reaching Vines hat by a texture, textured toque. A viewer so nicely. One of my Canadian peeps. So nicely pointed out that that is a Canadian word and it's not toque, even though that would have been really funny. It is pronounced toque, T-O-Q-U-E, toque, like hook uh <laughs> I have this much done which isn't a lot it's just the brim and I'm like one two rows into the actual pattern so you guys will see more of that later this yarn is Malabrigo Rios in the Nibla so colorway it's pure merino superwash and it is so soft. I cannot wait to wear this hat. It's gonna be great. I feel like I went from having not anything on the needles that was vanilla to everything that I have on the needles is vanilla, except for my mucklucks. My next whip is just a pair of two at a time vanilla socks because I had no socks. Well, I have brainless socks, but I mean vanilla socks. I am not matchy matchy. I don't like matching things typically. I don't think I own a single pair of any type of patterned socks that match. If they do, it wasn't on purpose. And this, I love this. One little gray stripe. The reason that these socks are fun is for one, my friend Diana let me borrow her signatures. This is the first time that I've ever knit on signatures. They are a size one and it's a circular needle. Couple things about them, just based on the toe knitting. If I were to order my own pair of signatures, I would want a longer needle I would probably get the, the six inch maybe, five or six inch. I definitely like, the way I knit, I feel like the longer needle, like I, I want needle right here. The way I hold my needles, I like it longer. The other thing, and I have not told Diana this yet, I'll be seeing her this weekend, you'll hear about that later. You know, on Magic Loop, I'm pulling, I'm pulling it through. One of these needles popped off the cable. And I was immediately like, no, 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 no. Cause you know, these are like ridiculously expensive. 
the joins look pretty much like any other join. It's nice, they don't get hung up or anything. When it popped out, I sort of freaked out because I have nitpicks. When they pop out of a nitpick, they're just done. However, if you call nitpicks and tell them that happened, they replace it. I know how much these needles cost and when that came out, I freaked out, especially since they're not my needles. Messing around, I put it in and turned it. They like screw in. I don't know if they have these itty bitty baby little threads in there. I mean, they have to because I haven't had a problem. It must have been the way I was knitting, just unscrewed it. Of course, I'm going to tell Diana that that happened because yikes. But I put it in, screwed it together. I haven't had a problem since then. And I don't know, maybe everybody else already knows that about signatures, but I don't. I've never heard anybody else say that before. So you'd think it's something that would be mentioned. These are the stiletto tips. Love, love, love them. Love them. Love them. The yarn I'm using, you know I do two at a time. I am putting them in my Steel City Stitcher ball sack that I won from the Naughty Knitwits. They have snaps. What I do is I roll two balls and I cram them in there basically. And then I snap them on the outside. So I have yarn coming from both sides. It's awesome. The yarn I'm using is Simply Socks Yarn Company Post Yarn. I'm sure that most people have heard of Simply Socks Yarn Company already. I'm not going to assume that. They have their own line that they dye in store. That right there is a picture of the store. A rendered drawing. Is that what it's called? Rendered? That's what I'm calling it. On the back, you have a little postcard. Isn't it cute? Look at the little stamp with the little socks. So this is Striping Sock 75 Superwash Corydale Wool 25 Nylon. It's approximately 393 yards. Machine wash cold, flat dry. It says finished socks will tolerate machine drying with some loss of stiff definition. Some loss of stiff. <laughs> I'm not even drinking, you guys, I have a water. I get a massage tonight and I don't drink on massage nights because you're not supposed to. But I, like this is just me sober, I promise. Stitch definition. You will lose stitch definition over time when drying. I go back and forth. Sometimes I'll throw them, at some, it depends on how I'm feeling. Most of the time I will dig them out. Sometimes I'm like, whatever, and I throw them in the dryer when I'm being lazy, they seem to be fine. This colorway is Snowflake Arizona. One of the things with Post Yarn is all of their colorways are places. So on the back it says, Post Yarn is Simply Sock Yarn Company's exclusive line of sock yarn specializing in hand-dyed stripes and specialty yarns. Post Yarn pays homage to our 3,500 square foot store and studio, which is housed in our newly restored 1940s post office. So that is an old post office. Allison is the owner. I actually am fortunate enough to know her and call her a friend. And she started her business out of the basement of her home several years ago. She does have her shop open every other Tuesday and Saturday. And I have to look at the website as to what days they're open because I can't ever remember. But totally worth going there. Totally. I think I've said that before. Pretty sure I have said that before. She has like tons and tons and tons of yarn. Actually, I think I, I think I may have mentioned on the podcast before that she has like seven tons of yarn. I asked her the other day because Dan thought that it was physically impossible for her to have seven tons of yarn in the store. And we were kind of in a little tiff about it, as tiffy as we get, which 
that's the stuff we fight about, which is a five minute argument. So I text her, I was like, I'll, I'll settle this right now. I'm texting Allison. <laughs> so she texts me back. She's like, it's more like 17 tons. So we were both wrong. I highly suggest checking that out. This has been in the stash for a very long time. Also, if you are a two at a time sock knitter, such as I, I recommend going to Steel City Stitcher, buying yourself a ball sack, cause it comes in really handy for two at a time socks. Next is enabling. So y'all know February was my birthday month. Nitty in color. If you follow her on Instagram, she has this super rad colorway named Supernova that I've been drooling over for quite some time. Just so happens, like the week before my birthday, she posted an update and I was talking to Sissy Knits and I told her that I was going to try and catch it in an update and I got it. Oh my God, you guys. I mean, is that not amazing? Every time she posts it on Instagram, I'm, I'm in love with it. When I was chatting with Sissy Nets on Instagram, I told her that I was going to try and catch this in an update. And I told her if I didn't catch it, that I was going to instead buy a skein of Naughty Unicorn from Atomic Fire, Atomic Fiber Company, who I love and I've bought her yarn before. Her colors are amazing and they make me happy. So that was my backup plan if I didn't catch this. But then I was like, hell, it's my birthday weekend. I want both of them. <laughs> so I bought both. Naughty Unicorn. I mean, what a great color name. So this one, the Supernova is on her hardcore sock hard cord, hard cord, hardcore sock base. And it's 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it's a 463 yard skein. So mad yardage. And then for Atomic, Fi Atomic Fiber Company, it's on her posh sock, uh, same, 75 merino, 25 nylon, 463 yards those will be marinating in the stash for a little bit. My other enabling, I ordered these at the beginning of December and they were back ordered. For all of you who don't know, these, <laughs> I think I'm really tired and like slap happy. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a nap before my massage, I do believe. These are the Addy Flexi Flips. I do have yarn ready to cast on for these guys. I'm super excited to try them. The signature needles being short, so are these guys. So we'll see how I like them. I already have the yarn all skeined up. Wit, oh, you guys. I watch a podcast called the Bookish Stitcher Podcast. Her name's Jeanette. She also dyes. Her yarn is Open Skies Yarn. She's super, super sweet. Nothing like me. <laughs> she's very soft-spoken. I've never, I can't, she's one of those people that I can't see cussing. Like, if, if a cuss word came out of her mouth, I feel like a record would scratch and the music would stop and everyone would drop their silverware and do one of these things. Like she's so, so sweet. She's the Bookish Stitcher podcast and she talks, she has a couple of little kids and a husband and she lives in Texas and she loves books. She, the first part of her podcast is knitting and the second part of her podcast, she'll tell you about what she's reading. She also does a lot of foreign language stuff. I wouldn't say fluent, but she can get her way around multiple languages and she's always studying. You can just tell she's super sweet. So her dying is she does it just because she likes doing it. 
she'll put them put her skeins in the shop and if she sells them it's like extra money that she spends on her kids for stuff that they want she's not trying to make a career out of it she just does it because she loves it last year she had i guess a contest i don't know she had a giveaway contest thing on her podcast where she had and it was really cool i thought it was awesome and i almost wish that more podcasters would do this hey i'm a podcaster i could do this i mean i don't want to copy off of her but it was so much fun so what she did, I'm not a yarn dyer, so it wouldn't work for me, but we might be able to figure out something like some other way to do this. She opened a thread. The prompt was to post a picture of what came to your mind when you thought of summer. Then the picture in the thread that got the most loves, she would dye a colorway from. I'll see if I can find the picture that I submitted so that you can see it. Mine won and she dyed a colorway after it. It was nighttime with like fireflies because I grew up in the country and you know, you caught lightning bugs in a jar and that's like the perfect summer night to me. I can smell the air when I think about it. It won and this has been marinating in my stash for a long time and it's a super special skein. It is 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon, 469 yards, soft sock. That's three skeins in a row. I wonder if they're all the same base. That's kind of funny. Um, but she called it summer skies at night. I'll actually see if I can post a link to this specific thread, which she locked obviously after the contest was over, but it's fun to just go in there and look at the pictures. And I love how everybody voted. So maybe in a future giveaway, let, let's, uh, not that I ever planned on doing any giveaways. We'll figure it out. Maybe we can, you know, because it's it's your guys' podcast too, get the wheels a spinning and somehow do a picture with the most loves will win something, but yeah, I don't know. Since I'm not a dyer, I can't really say I'm gonna dye a, a, a colorway after that, nor do I wanna completely copy off Jeanette, which is what that would be, but I thought that that was so cool and it was sort of fun to see what everybody else's idea of summer was in their pictures and to think of those pictures as a colorway. I almost forgot to mention uh, Jeanette's skein of yarn and my Addy Flips. These socks that I will cast on are going to be outside of my comfort zone on a couple different things. New needles with the Addy Flips. I am also going to enter Andy's Cal for the 10,000 Stitches podcast. She has a pattern, the Exceedingly Vanilla Socks, and she is going to be doing a knit along, which is top down, German cast on, I'm going to be using because you know I, I threw that question out to you guys. So I'm going to be doing one at a time, which I don't normally do, and a German Twisted cast on which I've done on a couple other things. Uh, I did that on this guy and it feels, it feels good. I'm excited to try it. If any of you guys are looking for a cal for some easy vanilla socks, Andy's uh, pattern is free. The exceedingly vanilla, vanilla, the exceedingly vanilla socks. One of the cool things about Andy, which I've mentioned in my past episode, she does the 10,000 Stitches podcast. She's the physicist. She's like uber smart and stuff. She makes total sense with this pattern. She has a full pattern, pictures. It's like five pages long. However, she likes paper patterns, as do I. And sometimes it's easier to not have 
five pages of pattern. So she has the option to have an extremely condensed version so that you can have it all on one. So keep an eye out for that. She does have a hashtag for it. I'm excited to see what people do. I'm excited to knit her sock. I'm excited to try my new needles. I'm excited to do top down. All these things are so exciting. Next is show and tell. I'm going off of the knitting fiber path for show and tell this week. As you know, I did the quilting retreat last weekend. When you stay at this retreat center, I don't know if all retreat centers are like this, but you take your own bedding, so your sheets and your blankets, and at the quilting retreat, everybody has a quilt for their bed. I called my mom up and was like, hey, I know I have a quilt there from Grandma Ruby. Can I have it for the retreat? Grandma Ruby wrote a handwritten letter explaining this quilt. I will show you the quilt. Okay. Um, it's hand quilted. The note, which I need to do some, let me show you the back here. It smells like my mom's house. I love that smell. The letter, I need to do some research. I'm gonna try to keep this short and for it to make sense. My great grandma Ruby, who is my mom's dad's mom, okay, is the one who gave this to my mom and told her to keep it safe until I was in a spot where, you know, I could get it or whatever. The other funny note, <laughs> that was also attached to this is she has a set of silverware from 1843 or something. Actually, let me look. 1847. I'll just read it to you from this, from this note. Okay, my grandma wrote this in 95. My 1847 silverware in silver box to be for Cinda, who is my mom, my mom's name, Cinda, till Chevis gets married from great grandma Ruby Ethel Krieger. And I was like, I don't think I'll ever get that silverware. <laughs> I think I'll die not having my silverware. Who will it go to then? She also goes on, my mom made a copy and kept the original app. Yeah the house, probably in the safe, just in case. But she goes on to explain that this blanket, Amelia, who she says her fifth grandma, which I need to go back in our like genealogy and look and see who it was. I think that it might have been her great grandma but I'm not positive. It was pieced in the 1800s, this was, okay? So it laid pieced for years. And then my grandma Ruby's mom died when she was three and my grandma Ruby moved in with her aunt who would be her mom's sister, if you can follow that. So my grandma moved in with her aunt Jenny Aunt Jenny and her two sisters quilted this in 1904 when my grandma was four years old. Here it is 2017 and I have this awesome quilt. One of the things that I am super, I would love to know, and, and I don't know, some of you might know, here's my viewer question for the week. If this was pieced in the, I'm thinking mid 1800s, why do I feel like red would have been a big deal then? Like, wasn't vibrant dyed fabric like this expensive or hard to get then? I, I, I'm just totally floored at this like red color being in the 1800s. I wish I could go back in time. I really do. Like, 
I love this. And to think that so many of my family members who I never got to meet and never would have been able to meet is a piece of my world. I love the fact that this has... I'm just super fortunate and it makes my heart happy that I have this like treasure, this family heirloom. I know that a lot of people don't uh, have things like this. And when I was reading the note, I didn't know who these people were. So I'm also lucky enough that my uncle Ralph, who is my grandpa's brother, is still alive. He's in his 90s. He is, his mind is sharp as a tack. So I have somebody that I can go to and ask who these people are, but he did not know who Amelia was. So I'm going to have to do some research on like when Amelia died to see when exactly this was pieced because it was, it hung out pieced until 1904 when they finally quilted it. And that was after she was gone. So it'll be, I won't know the whole story, but it'll be kind of cool to uh, solve a little piece of the mystery anyway. I want to know from you guys, viewer question, what's your uh, thoughts or knowledge on this vibrant red fabric being accessible in the 1800s? I want to, I want to know. My shawl keeps falling off. It hates me, you guys. Like, it's trying to get away from me. It doesn't like me that bad. It's either going to be a tablecloth or I'm giving it to my mom. I almost feel bad giving it to my mom. Like, there's some bad juju in it. Like, maybe nobody should have it. One last thing in the other category. I feel like this is a really long episode for not having a whole lot, but I've been pretty chatty chatty. Before I started this, I was ready for a nap. And I was like, mm, I think I'll just record. And I thought that I was going to be all like chill and soft spoken. Like some of the other podcasters that I'm nothing like because I'm not chill and soft spoken. <laughs> but when I started this, I was like, oh, I think I'm going to be. Yeah, no. As soon as I start talking about fiber stuff, I'm like, da -da 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 like it just ramps me all up because I love it so much. Last thing this weekend I am going to Indianapolis again I never go to Indianapolis I went two weekends ago now I'm going again this weekend the reason that I'm going this weekend I'm only going down for a day trip on Saturday with my friends Diana and Jody they are in my bitter knitters group you've heard of Diana she did the ma the, the marauders hat pattern and this weekend down in Indy they are having a button show and competition. I am so excited. Has anyone ever been to a button show and competition? I cannot wait to see what's there. This is the last weekend for the yarn crawl down there. So I'm sure that Jody and Diana will want to get in on that. We are going back to Always in Stitches, which of course will hit Black Sheep as well. If you watched my previous episode on the Yarn Crawl, the Black Sheep gals, Karen and Marina, are going to be at Stitches Midwest up in Chicago doing some stuff for Cascade Yarn, which is awesome. And Joanne will be there, who had the sock machine. So they are Always in Stitches and Black Sheep yarn and fiber are very close to each other so we're gonna hit both of those I don't know I have to tell you guys I don't know if we'll make it to Mass Ave or not it depends on our schedule and where all we're going but I got a message from Susan who is the owner of Mass Ave do you remember I told you that I forgot to show her my passport she saw the show which I can't believe I don't know I can't believe that. That's awesome. And and she credited me my discount. She said, I credited your card. Your show was so cute, yada, yada. 
I'm like, oh, you didn't have to do that. I forgot to tell you that I had it. You'd think that if I bought it, I would have been like, hey, I have a passport. But isn't that cool? She credited me my discount because I forgot to show her my passport. So that was super sweet of her. Everybody, you know, yarn shops are, I've, I've only ever been in one yarn shop in my entire life that was mean. I've been very, very fortunate in, in I, I feel like 99% of yarn people are awesome and nice and we're just all friends and we don't even know each other and it just makes my heart happy. So I'm looking forward to going back to the shops. The main reason that I'm going back to Always in Stitches is because I'm going to buy or at least look for the stuff to um, do my my little cross stitch thing I got there, that little moth pin cushion that I got on my haul. I'm gonna try and find the stuff for that. So that and Diana and Jody haven't been there. So it'll be part of our day trip. I can't imagine that a button showing competition would take an entire day. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna make a little loop de loop of it, you know, grab some good grub while we're down there. Indianapolis has awesome places to eat. That's it. I hope you guys have an awesome world until the next time I see you. If you haven't yet, subscribe, thumbs up it. That like lets other people find me. That is if you want other people to find me. <laughs> anyway, uh, until next time, we'll catch you on the flip side. Yeah. Mm -hmm.